Welcome back guys. We are five weeks out. We're going to show you what we're taking for the show prep here. So we have vitamin D. I am a pretty big advocate of about 10,000 I use um, just for a normal dose. I know it's a lot, but there's been a lot of research to show that that might be the best for staying healthy. Now, ashwagandha, they say you don't need to take it for longer than like a couple months. I've been taking it for three months and then I got off of it and then I started to notice a difference. So I'm going to start taking this again. It does help with stress and cortisol and hunger levels and stuff like that. Ghrelin hormone um, regulation. Fidoja, honestly, one of my favorites. Um, really helps support vitality, boost natural energy levels, men's wellness. It increases testosterone and um, it, it's a great herb to take. Next, uh, resveratrol. I just want to try it. Um, it's supposed to have really good health benefits for your heart and for anti-aging and things like that. So I'm going to start taking that. Vitamin C, you know it, at least 1,000 milligrams every day. Just stay healthy. Creatine monohydrate. Now, I am five weeks out. So this is my last week on creatine. I'm going to, I'm going to be off for about four weeks. And uh, I think that's, that's appropriate. Then we got fish oil. I never get off of fish oil. Uh, I just think it's a really good source of omega threes. So then you get your multivitamin. This is a whole food multivitamin, something that I have been taking a long time that I really like, and uh, it's only one pill. And then occasionally I will take some niacin. Now this is the kind that makes you flush. If you look at it, it says niacin. You know, it's not ni niacinamide or whatever. It's the, it's the flush kind. So this is I get this at the vitamin shop, and that's good if you just feel down or you want more blood flow, maybe on your day off or something, help recover. So that's my supplements I'm taking right now. Well, hey guys, we're out here in the wilderness, and every once in a while on prep, I like to go for a walk, especially if the weather's nice and it's a beautiful day in late August. And it's a beautiful day. I'd like to talk to you about my prep a little bit. Um, eating a lot of fish these days, tilapia. I start off with 20 raw eggs every day, but that's just me. Pardon me. Working out is my life. Um, I would say it's one of the better fish to eat. It's very uh, sustainable source of fish. Um, it tastes good, it cooks well, it keeps well. Um, you know, despite what you hear about it being farm raised and all the antibiotics, I say go for it. Um, you're cooking out most of that stuff anyway. At the end of the day, you're getting 20, 20, 25 grams of protein. Um, it's worth it, all right? So, check it out, this is the trail. And um, yeah, so asparagus as well. The last three weeks of a bodybuilding show, basically you just, you're dehydrating your body. You know, you obviously you wanna burn fat, but most of the fat burning has already taken place if you've been dieting. And I, I did an 18 week prep, 18 week diet. It's the longest prep I've ever done, but I was also the heaviest I ever was at 207. I'm down to 187, so I've lost 20 pounds in the last 13 weeks. And, um, you know, there's certain foods that I pull out at this time of the prep, like asparagus. I might even switch to eating sweet potato instead of white rice soon. Um, but, you know, I got a new car a couple days ago, and that's been real exciting. Um, just been going through a lot of stress, not just physiological stress from the prep, but just life in general. So I haven't been able to vlog much, but things are getting better uh, by the grace of God. And um, so my training, I'm going back to high volume training and I love it. It's, um, it's my favorite kind of training. It's basically bodybuilding training. It's the kind of training I wish I could do year round, but the sad reality is if you're Trying to maintain size and strength long term, you're going to have to lift heavier weight for lower reps. And 
I can say honestly, I've done a good job of that this prep that I've been eat that I've been um, lifting about th th three reps for squats and for bench. Um, I'm not doing any deadlifts except for RDLs sometimes on leg day, but I think it's important to stick with a heavier weight so you don't lose strength. Because if you lose strength, what are you going to really lose? You're going to lose muscle. So it's key to keep that central nervous system somewhat firing properly. I think a lot of people are afraid they're going to snap something. Um, but honestly, when people tear something, it's either because they're going too explosive or they're too dehydrated or they're doing too much weight for the rep range they're doing. But if you go heavy, you're not going too heavy. You're just going heavier than you normally would at an appropriate rep range. So you might be doing, you know, 70, 75, 80% for sets of three. And that's it. You don't need to go any heavier than that. You're not maxing out or anything. Um, even when people max out, they're not tearing their bicep or their quad or whatever, unless they just fall with the weight or something. But, you know, it's important to, eat, to lift moderately heavy most of the time. Um, I've heard it said that some of the greatest power lifters lifted a moderate weight just consistently. Just 70, 75, 80, 80% 80 moderately heavy all the time. So powerlifting plays a huge role in bodybuilding. I don't think people realize how, how much of a role it, it really plays because you take a guy that does just does 12 to 15 reps on his on his isolation movements for a year and then you take the guy who did heavy strength lifting for like maybe two or three months and then you put him on a bodybuilding type of regimen he's gonna have way more muscle he's gonna be stronger he's gonna be bigger so let that be a lesson lift heavy um so i showed you my vitamin prep for the week honestly my calories change every week my vitamins change almost every week um i'm not looking forward to get off of creatine because i know how valuable it is for, for muscle building and for strength but it is what it is i'm gonna get a little bit weaker when i get off of creatine but uh it's very temporary it's only for about four weeks. So then I'm going to reverse diet after the show. Probably a little bit faster reverse diet. Um, I just, I hope to gain about 10 to 15 pounds within two months. That's kind of the goal. It's not going to be like super harebrained slow like it was last time. Because uh, I want to get strong again by, by Christmas time. So... You gotta time these things just right, guys. Um, here we go, look at this. We got a nice little bridge here. So, um, my split is basically legs, chest, back, shoulders, arms. Nothing crazy fancy. But I pick the best movements. And I do probably at least six exercises and upwards of 20 sets so when i say high volume i mean i'm talking at least 20 sets per body part per week in one workout you know um you know it is it's training it's eating supplementation and it's recovery those are your basic four things you know so right now we're doing recovery um, I trained arms yesterday. It's I, I don't know for you if, if you're on prep and you're training on your off day, that's really taxing. So it was kind of tough. But uh, I'll be back to doing legs tomorrow, and um, I think I'll be all right. And so uh, just want to address the fadoja thing. Fadoja is a natural herb, naturally to boost testosterone. Did you know tomatoes will also boost your testosterone? Um, not as much as as in the enhanced level, of course, but I am natural. I'm a lifetime natural, and uh, you know, it's like 
I don't know, people, if you look at me right now, I don't look that big. I look like a, a normal average guy. But if you look at my videos of me lifting with a pump, I look like I'm 230 pounds, you know? And I look, but I'm all stacked up on gear. And that's the kind of the, the looks that I'm getting at the gym these days. Oh man, looking for blackberries. Is that people think that this, you know, this guy's, he's a hoss boss with, with no limits, you know? I don't know what they're thinking, but I get a lot of people staring at me at the gym. And it's only in the last few weeks of a prep that it happens. It feels good, but I'm not doing it necessarily to get people to look at me. I just want to be the best I can be as part of the process. Nobody wants to embrace the fullness of the process. Everybody wants to either hit a max PR and spend no time working up to that PR, or they want to get shredded in two weeks and do a crash diet. I'm sorry, that's not how it works. You either devote yourself to like a 16 week cut and you get shredded and then you reverse diet out of that thing or you spend a good two to three months lifting heavy and then you max out. If you want to do it right, you want to stay safe and you actually want to move forward, you know? I'm, I'm 33 years old, I'll be 34 in a couple months and Actually, no, a month and a half. I've done it right, and I've improved. You should never go backwards. I don't care how old you are. You should never go backwards. You should be able to learn from your mistakes. You should be able to supplement harder than last time. You should be able to train and recover harder than last time. And you should just get better. It's all a mentality, guys. It's, it's all a mindset. Age is just a number. And if you listen to people who aren't making progress or they're going backwards, you're going to look just like them. You become what you behold. So listen to people that have done it, people that are successful for whatever area you're looking at in life, whether it's building a physique or whether it's making money or whether it's spirituality like I don't know just just look at people who have done it the best leaders lead by example okay so yeah by the way this cardio may not seem like much but it's about 130 beats per minute plus I have a little caffeine this morning that's all you need guys I hate the saying well the heart is the most important muscle in the body yeah, it's cardiac muscle. It's not skeletal muscle. It's a different type of muscle. Because that's an excuse for... for That's layman's terms for I'm not going to work out because I just want to work my heart. Let me tell you something, guys. If it was a thousand years ago and you didn't have access to a gym, then yeah, go for a run, go for a walk, train your heart, have a healthy heart. But if you want to do the more... The, the, if you want to do more than just train your heart... Go to a gym, you know. Um, you can train your heart when you're lifting weights. So modern technology kind of eliminated the need for cardio. You can just look at the movie Back to the Future 2 when they talk about running. Run for fun? Who runs for fun anymore? Um, it's kind of a joke because you don't really need to run anymore. What are you running from, a bear? Um... So yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're able to do 40 push-ups, which is a form of resistance training, you have cut your risk of heart disease by 96% according to one study. So, talk about training your whole body and your heart at the same time. That's what we call killing two birds with one stone. Alright? So yeah, um, as far as like cheats and sweets, I don't really crave them. You know what my cheat is? My cheat is a country club Jimmy John's sandwich with mayonnaise. That's my cheat. And it's about 750 calories. And I don't have it all the time. I have it maybe once every two weeks. But I make room for it in my calories. And that's enough. I don't need ice cream. I don't need pizza. I don't need 
all that stuff. I, don't, I haven't had any fries in a long time. Um, haven't had ice cream, haven't had fries. I've had like little ice cream bars, but I'm talking like real ice cream, like like Cold Stone or Ben, ben and Jerry's. That's what I call real ice cream. Um, and so you just gotta make it work. You gotta know your body. You gotta know your habits, your tendencies, your strengths, your weaknesses. Um, and already I can feel my ears are turning red from the niacin. Um, but yeah, 130 beats per minute for cardio is all you need for a nice long, uh, you know, cardio session. We're already 13 minutes into this cardio sesh. So basically at this point, I will turn around and go back. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off you guys. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna enjoy this beautiful day. All right, peace out. So for meal prep, what we're doing is tilapia, asparagus, and white rice. Right here we have four ounce fillets, 20 grams of protein each, with a little bit of Cajun seasoning, no oil added. We're doing asparagus steamed with rice. This should last us about five days. What would you like to do if money were no object? What, how would you really enjoy spending your life? Forget the money. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. If you say that getting the money is the most important, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living, that is to go on doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid.